All right, Bob Quinn went on 97 won a ticket with uh, Jamie and Stoney. I linked the article in the description. It was asked if Josh Allen had to fail one more spot, would he have took Josh Allen or he still took TJ Hawkinson? And as usual, you know, tough questions. Bob Quinn tap danced around it. He didn't sit there and say, Hawkinson definitely was our guy. Whoop de whoop. Or he didn't say, I'm going to take Josh Allen. Nope. He said it was a bit, little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a bit more of a talking point about which one to take. But they're happy to have TJ Hawkinson. Be back. More City Sports Talk. We in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, bell icon button. Won't miss another video. And, um, Heard rumors that if Colleen Farrell had failed at number eight, <clears throat> they was going to take Colleen Farrell. So, of course, you don't want to sit there and say, I would have took Allen, obviously, and Hawkinson feels some type of way like he not wanted. You always want to make your guy feel like, you know, he the guy you wanted. You want to make him feel special, wanted, and not feel slighted because one day you're going to have to resign him uh, to a contract. So that's how you look at it. Just like a girl, you know, you might have wanted her friend, Hey, you shot for the uh, shot for the stars, you hit the top of the building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you make her seem like you the one, she the one you always wanted. But obviously, I believe, like I know the intel that I got, that they was going to take Colleen Farrell. So they didn't expect Josh Allen to fall. So they would have took Josh Allen in a heartbeat. They would have ran that card quicker than quick up to the podium, just as quick as they ran it. Well, when Mayhew and Lewan ran it up there, ran it up there for Eric Ebron, and it just would have fit. You had a dynamic pass rusher on the edge that can probably put his hand in the dirt, but stand up 3-4, fit definitely what the Lions wanted to do. It would have changed the whole dynamic of the draft. But they still took Jelani Tavai in the second round, then I think they probably would have took a tight end. I think Irv Smith was there. Or they would have they would have did something else. You know what I'm saying? Then come the third round, if Giovanni Tavani still was there, then they would have had Giovanni Tavani, and then they would have had uh, Josh Allen, which Tavani probably would have been there three or four or, fifth or five rounds. It's turning people you ask, but like I said before, it was a no-brainer. Josh Allen was a guy that before we started talking about draft talk, people were saying before the season was over with, that's the guy that they should have got. That's the guy the Lions should get. And sometimes you got to move up and get the guys you want. But the thing about it for the Lions is they don't have a luxury. And I always point this out. Going back to Millen, that era, that still affects the depth for this team. Going back to Mayhew Lewan, which were in Millen's, a cabinet, they affect the depth to this team. Obviously, they were the uh, the regime before Bob Quinn get here. So Bob Quinn can't sit here and draft for home runs. He not he don't have the liberty to take certain guys or move up to take certain guys. He really wants to move down, collect multiple picks to build the depth of this team. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to build it from the ground up. And you depth is is the base of any good team. You know what I'm saying? Versatility. And depth, I mean, they go hand in hand, you know. You as good, your depth is as good as your versatility. Your versatility is as good as your depth. So you got Giovanni Tavani, Jelani, excuse me, Tavai, Christian Jones, and Devin Kennard all can play the Mike linebacker position. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, obviously they have to produce. You know what I'm saying? And Jerry Davis, they have to produce. But you got three people that can play the most important position on a majority of defenses. That's sweet, right? You got Deshaun Hand who can play Three technique, and he can play defensive end. That's sweet, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got Trey Flowers that can play the defensive end, the outside defense, well, defensive end position, and he can play inside, you know, in, in, the, in the deep tackle. You know, that's sweet. You know, Tracy Walker, Quadre Diggs, both can play corner. Diggs can play the nickel. That's where he started off. Tracy Walker can play corner. I don't understand why they didn't put Walker at corner last year when he got bad. But he can play corner. Versatility. You know what I'm saying? So it's all over the field for the Lions. Justin Coleman, he could play the nickel, and they believe he could play on the outside. You know, that's what you want. You know, Terrell, uh, Terrell Crosby, right tackle, left, right guard, left guard, left tackle. He could play all those positions. Maybe left tackle, not as good as the rest, but, hey, he there if you need him. That's the beauty That's the beauty of, of, of the way he drafted. He drafted for depth. He's drafting – you know, for depth, this was a depth draft. Because outside of the first two picks, Hawkinson and um and Jelani Tavai, and that might be a stretch in some of your people's opinion with the shoulder injury, those may be the only two players that get significant playing time or at least be starters next year outside of special teams. Because you go to Will Harris, you know, he'd probably be a special team contributor. 
You know what I'm saying? You go to uh, you know, Austin Bryan, he ain't phys- – the physical strength-wise, he can't be an every-down defensive end. You know, Amani Awakwe, he can probably start at some point, depending on how bad Ford and Tabor do, but that's not a guy you're looking to start right now. He had one-year starter at, at Penn State, one and a half, I believe. But he got good ball skills. You know, you might want to get him to learn real fast. So next year, he'll be ready. He'll be the third candidate, I think, to start. You know, a lot of those guys may not make the team. You know, so, like I said, I'm not uh, real versed on the undrafted free agents. But, you know, I just, I clearly believe that Josh Allen would have been the clear pick. I mean, I don't think anybody else would agree, disagree with me. Shit, Colleen Farrell was going to be the pick, from what I understand. So, I don't think anybody else would really dis- disagree with it. Of course, he's not going to come out in a minute. Hey, if, if it was a fifth, we all be drunk. But he was happy to see Josh Allen fall, and they probably had the card wrote in. And Jacksonville could have easily took TJ Hawkinson before they took Josh Allen. Did they really need Josh Allen uh, with the guys they got there? Really not. You know, they got pass rushers. They got fast linebackers, Talvin Smith, Miles Jack. I mean... The uh they got defensive tackles and ends and Calais Campbell. You know, they did give Dante Fowler. He didn't work out. So they probably got a, the room for another pass rusher like Allen. At that price, you know, why not? I thought that they could take a tight end with um Hawkinson. Because they don't have no tight end over there. And the tight end is Nick Foles' best friends. He might not hit Zach Ertz as much as uh Carson Wentz did, but shit, that might be a problem over there because none of the running backs out the backfield <laughs> are receiving backs for them. I, I don't believe. I don't know who they add and who they. I know they got rid of TJ Yeldon. None of them dudes receiving the back ball out the backfield. So really, when you look at that receiving court, like and they tight end, who gonna control the middle of the field? So you would think they would be trying to set up Zach. Uh, excuse me, um, Nick Foles for success, and Hawkinson would have been a good candidate. To come in in that offense and him form a rapport with him would have been great. Well, obviously, the football guys are not always kind of Detroit Lions. You know, once again, we take a tight end, and um, I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, I've done videos before saying the past doesn't always dictate the future. You can't put what Pettigrew failed to do, what Ebron failed to do, and put it on Hawkinson. You know what I'm saying? But if Hawkinson don't work out, it, it ain't a tight end thing. It's a fucking organizational thing. The Lions got to learn to coach better. But if he don't work out... It could, I mean, they might not be able to see him, <laughs> you know, uh, continue here. If he, I mean, or early, if he got a drop or if he, or if he got a drop or if he, you know, injured or he don't pan out well and you got guys that go on like, you know, Montez Sweat that do well, Ed Oliver tearing the league up. I mean, they might as well just pack that shit up and walk out right now if that happens, man. So, like I said before, they put Hawkinson over J- Josh Allen. I think I think this draft in a lot of people's mind, this is not my opinion, would have been a complete failure. But like I said, let him choose his own team, Bob Quinn. Let him, you know, you know, let him, you know, build his team. If he don't do well, then you know, hopefully march it forward, pull the trigger, and fire him. If he do well, then he know what he's talking about. He's the smartest guy in the room. It's just that a lot of Lions fans are 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 pretty much, you know, you know, they scorn, you know, they 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 injure, they hurt and have looking for the proper word. They just don't, you know, they've seen it before. So you gotta show them to make us believe. Not yeah, show us to make us believe you know what you're talking about. And I'm I'm here to give Bob Quinn a fair shot. You know, let's see what do these players do a year, two years down the line. They might turn into some significant players. So I'm not knocking them. I'm not deter- deterring anybody for rocking with the Lions. Let's get it. Let's see what they can do with Hawkinson. Let's see what Bevel can do. And if Hawkinson don't work out in this offense, then it's a, it's a curse. It's the lack of coaching. Or Matthew Stafford, you know, just don't like throwing to the tight end. And I said it before. Maybe Stafford doesn't feel confident making those tight throws over the middle. And maybe they know that his accuracy might be a problem throwing over the middle. So they kind of want the tight ends to get outside the hash because you rarely see the tight ends work the nine route with the seams, post, post down the middle and zone, post corner, double moves. Any, you know, anything going vertical, wheel routes that Ebron went last year, you might mainly see them do the, the the shallow crossing route, drag route, crossing route. You know, they go to the flats on the quarterback bootleg, and that's pretty much it in little end routes. But, hey, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys feel. Link the article in the description. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if need be. 
Appreciate the love and support. One time for the one time Mercy Sports Talk.